Hi, my name's Scott Naismith, I'm a landscape painter. Uh, this one's pretty much finished and it's time for the demo to show you how it was put together. Uh, this particular one this time is oil and acrylic on canvas and I'll be telling you a little bit about that in part two. Uh, the video is split up into two parts, one of them being the acrylic on canvas accompanied by a new song from Not The Face and the second part will be a little bit commentary when it turns to time lapse in the studio, the second part being the oil part. Um, Yes, oil on top of acrylic, not the other way around.
Hi there, this is me with a little bit of commentary, just as that dramatic music is building up for the time lapse. Um, I just thought I'd say a few words about, uh, first of all, the medium uh, in which I'm working. Uh, today is the oil on acrylic, and uh, really to illustrate some pitfalls within using that, uh, obviously the pluses are you can work with the quality of oils on top of a substrate that's going to dry really quickly. Um, I like the use of oils within that process because the uh, sort of fun bit at the start of really being expressive with the paint is able to be uh, worked upon in acrylic and it's all workable because you're working very quickly uh, and you can work on top in oils uh, having prepared something with quite thick paint in the substrate. Uh, so that's the pluses. The, uh, the sort of pitfalls to watch out for would be the different colour palettes that you're using. Um, you've got to have the, uh, the oil colour working uh, in tandem with the acrylic paint. And I kind of get around this problem by using in the first stages of the oil painting part uh, glazing so I'll start off with uh, glazing the oil painting palette through uh, across the acrylics um, and building the colour that way. Uh, in a lot of cases with this one it's intensifying the colour but it doesn't always need to be like that. It's quite nice to work with bright colours and then dull them with uh, semi-opaque uh, glazes. I like the the concept of uh, constantly playing with the concept of opaque and transparent paint, uh, particularly um, through my preferred subject matter of, of cloud cover uh, and being transparent objects but opaque in, in some senses as well. Uh, a lot of the time you'll see a, a transition between the opaque oil paint applied on top and the uh, underpainting uh, showing through in the in the transparent places and this creates um, a kind of relationship between the, the acrylic paint and the oil paint. Uh, in the transparent areas there's still a trace of colour uh, to tint the, um, the acrylic paint and uh, in the opaque places it's uh, pure oil paint but the oil paint slides across the canvas uh, quite um, smoothly um, over the acrylic paint. So a lot of people might be questioning, uh, possibly in the comments later in this video, about uh, the longevity of this process of oil on top of acrylics and whether it actually abides by the fat on lean principles of oil paint, i.e. that your upper layers need to be fatter oilier than the lower layers and that's really because the, the top layers need to be suppler than the bottom layers. Now, uh, acrylic paint being plasticky does tend to be a fairly supple um, uh, substrate to be working on with oils. Uh, but if you think about it, you know, most people these days are using acrylic uh, gesso and uh, so most oil paintings these days are oil on top of acrylic. What I've done to negate this possibility, which is, is not really uh, much of an issue really um, but I've used uh, alkyd mediums uh, to make the oil paint a little bit more supple once dried and not as brittle um, so I'm working with uh, quick drying mediums uh, specifically um, I think it was on this one liquid um, with also a little bit of uh, cold wax medium for the matte properties. Uh, the water that I'm splashing up on it in the first stage of this painting uh, I've mixed in flow medium with that mix. I've also, uh, I often also add uh, matte medium um, to obtain uh, when you're working on top a slightly less glossy finish to work on top with oil. It's nice that the oil slides on top of the, uh, uh, the acrylic substrate but if you use matte medium it tends to be a little bit grippier and not as glossy. I certainly want, wouldn't really want to be using oil paint on top of a gloss finish or a gloss glaze acrylic base. Um,
So just coming to the end of this painting, at the start, the start of the video I, in, I introduce it and uh, you'll see in the background it looking slightly different than the end of this film and that is because uh, I wasn't entirely happy with it um, between finishing the film and videoing uh, the intro so you'll probably see some differences between the end of this video and the uh, proper finished painting which appears at the start of this video um, and I've just uh, introduced some rays of light emanating from the light source there uh, because I felt that it needed that um, connection. Uh, there's a very obvious vertical coming through the rocks there and uh, I felt that it needed a connection with the upper portion of the painting. Um, also, uh, you know the whole process that I show in this film of of real free acrylic painting and really getting it down very quickly and vigorously. Um, the idea behind the painting is there before I start that process, uh, but it is a very vague idea. I'm looking for a light source at sunset, and I'm looking for um, some sort of a reflection of that within the foreground. Where the exact elements lie uh, tends to uh, be dictated to a lot by the way in which it, the painting evolves through the freeness of paint at the, at the beginning, uh, just to make the most of that freeness of the first stage of the painting. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and please subscribe to the channel. Uh, tune in to the next video. Thanks a lot.